Hello and welcome to another roundup of Panto by me, Alex Belfield, here at CelebrityRadio.biz, the number one reviewer of theatre in the UK and Las Vegas on YouTube and Google. We just hit 60 million minutes viewed and we thank you for it. Thanks for tuning in today. Looking around the UK, we've been all over from Red Hill up to Darlington and Newcastle. We've been across to Crewe and Bridlington and most other places in between. Of course, many will cry, well, you haven't been everywhere, so how can you talk about everything? Well, that's like saying I haven't eaten in every McDonald's to know how a burger tastes. What we have done is visited every major production company in the UK. We've made every attempt to work with everyone this year, and it's been a revelation. What is most interesting to us is that the biggest have some of the worst and some of the smallest have the best. Let me explain. We began our panto tour at the London Palladium for Goldilocks at the beginning of December, and we couldn't believe the filth. It is my belief that pantomime is sacred, and there are a few things you do and don't do. You don't cross the line with panto, you have to have it rammed with innuendo, but that doesn't mean that you use single entendres. Julian Clary is one of our favourite comedians, but to us, he crossed a line in 2019. The previous pantos at the Palladium were funny and joyous and hysterical. This one, though, seemed to be grubby and offensive, and frankly, not nice, or in the spirit of pantomime, let alone the world-famous London Palladium. Let me give you the opening of Goldilocks, his first link as he walks out. He sings a song, which includes the lines, drop everything and sample my ring. He says, all because you want to stroll on the heath. Come on board, it's time to swallow my sword. Where's the human contortionist who brings me to my knees? He says, I thank you. My dick won an Olivier last year. Who knows what my ring will pick up this season? I'm always working on my act. I was just backstage polishing my juggler's balls. Now, we need a star of the show. Shall we ask Michael Ball to audition? He's often found sniffing around my ring. Of course, Julian was Ringo of the Ring and did about 10 ring gags in his opening monologue. This led to him talking about coming in Goldilocks's hair and saying to Paul Zerdin, you can't say your peas, can you? To which Zerdin replied, no, I'm a ventriloquist. It's hard to say our peas. Julian then looked at the front row, found a lady and said, Madam, do your lips move when you pee? This is not family fun, in my opinion. It was also way too loud, deafeningly loud. In fact, I only saw it yesterday again. They wouldn't give me a refund. It was so loud, my head was aching by the end. Having said that, the light show is sensational at the Palladium. And Philip Hitchcock does one of the most beautiful bits of variety I've ever seen. His Ring of Fire, ironically, uh, is absolutely stunning, beautifully lit. Lighting is the big thing at the Palladium. You want to see this show. It's a masterclass. The costumes, of course, Julian has never looked better. Surely the fact it's a family pantomime means it should be appropriate for everyone and all inclusive. We've then gone to shows where tickets are seven to 15 pounds with PHA and James Sean. Let's talk about this guy. James Sean is an absolute genius. He's 23 years old and he booked Liverpool Arena, blew us away with his polish of Snow White. This guy is so talented. It's inspiring to see that he could do this. I mean, absolutely competing with the best. That show looked absolutely beautiful. The set was remarkable. The script was tight and starred. Bippo, who blew us away, we loved him. A megastar of Panto who's going to be huge. At PHA, we went to Leeds to the Carriage Works and they've got another star there. Moira Dubois, this drag queen. I'd avoid his personal social media as he seems to like to rant and rave about things. But as an artist, I got to tell you, he's up there with the absolute best. We loved his Carabos. Just brilliant. Knew exactly how to work the crowd. Again, these pantomimes are half the price of Kudos. Pricing has been our big thing this year with tickets Christmas week cheapest from £50 at Birmingham Hippodrome. It seems to me the whole thing is totally out of perspective. I don't think the punters care as much about Panto as we do and they're going to end up just going to village halls instead of big theatres. And lest we forget, if theatres lose Panto, they're screwed. Something like 20% of their annual income comes in December through Panto. You cannot turn them away just because of greed. I know these productions are huge, and I know they cost a shitload of money. But as Michael Harrison and Nick Thomas bragged, they made 50 million last year. Did they need to make 50 million should be the question. From the narcissism, ego and contempt of Kudos down to the bottom end of Joe Purdy. We had a run-in with him at the beginning of the season. At the end of this, listen to our exclusive interview with Nick Newbold. Joe Purdy continually books venues, can't put on productions, cancels shows and then blames the punters. He's done it again. 
So basically, on the eve of the show, he hadn't got a costume for Cinderella. He was missing a microphone and put all this on social media, by the way. The guy's a complete moron to put this in the public domain so people like me can pick up on it. But we did an exclusive interview with Nick, who had to leave the production because it was such a mess in Bolton and Victoria Halls. Most shows seem to be cancelled. You can see an exclusive interview with Nick at the end of this. Just listen to the other end of the scale. I mean, say what you like about Nick and Michael at Kudos. At least they pay people and turn up on time. This Joe Purdy is highly dangerous and I recommend anybody should listen to that interview is considering working for him or having anything to do with him. Just yesterday, Joe claims because somebody hacked his ticket system to get free tickets for Jack in the Beanstalk at Easter, he was cancelling the whole production. He somehow claims it by the fact that 200 seats that were empty, by the way, we've seen the grids, the 200 seats were given away, he's cancelling the whole thing. It makes no sense. Of course, it's because it's a flop and nobody had booked. And we can say that in good faith because the ticket grids are still online and we can see exactly what's happening at Joe Purdy Productions. This guy is, as far as I'm concerned, concerned dangerous i'd have my day in court to prove it you just google him look at the endless articles do you remember when he said that the geordie shaw fellow scotty t with a big penis he was going to be in panto then he couldn't do it so he had a meet and greet at the end but left him on the poster so of course the punters were furious he then denied to the sun and other people that this was the case but you can't lie in 2020 because people go on social media and Facebook to out this nonsense. You would not believe how many messages I've had about Joe Purdy. He truly is a disgrace and he's bringing down the name of show business, pantomime and those who work within the business. It's shameful and he's a disgrace and we've got our eye on him. Of course, he's blocked us from all social media and all of that. He can do. Don't worry. People send it me anyway. And we encourage you to do that, by the way. If there's anything I need to know, I'm the only one seemingly telling the truth because I buy tickets and therefore buy my opinion. We don't need freebies from Kudos. We just go and buy a ticket and tell the truth. You can email me at alex at alexbelfield.co.uk, A-L-E-X-B-E-L-F-I-E-L-D, for the heart of thinking, .co.uk. You can follow me on Twitter, at Celebrity Radio, or at Facebook, The Alex Belfield, and we'd love to hear from you. Any producers who want to work with us next year, by the way, we can plaster Google and YouTube for you. We make three videos. It comes up the top. Page one of Google. Nobody will beat us. We just hit 60 million minutes viewed on YouTube. I'm up till 4 a.m. every morning editing this stuff, and we'd love to work with you next year all you need to do is cover our production costs and our travel and we will be there in 2020 for you be delighted to do so we've seen the light in 2019 and seen what is going on with pantomime and how it's become contemptuous we're going to talk about crew in a moment the most laughable set i've ever seen by kudos and it's not just there they were up to shenanigans in northampton where they got the chandelier in the kitchen because they just don't care in darlington one of the worst shows we've ever seen glasgow sec a complete disaster and they continue to put these six foot actors on their knees because they don't want to hire dwarves who say they're available and want to do the work it's the only minority left i think the only disability where you're allowed to sort of make fun of them and do you raise me up jokes and all of this i think it's disgraceful and it's cheap and we will continue to bang the drum for dwarves to get work in Snow White. What's interesting with some of the other producers, some are using dogs, some are using cartoon head masks. I'll go with any of this if you can't afford them. Kudos can't claim not to be able to afford dwarves when they're making £50 million. So as far as I'm concerned, they're Bradford production, Glasgow production. Wimbledon production all using these full length actors on their knees who are cheap and we've talked about how much actors get paid in panto it is a disgrace 500 to six 700 pounds a week is really an insult for how hard they work especially compared to the hundreds of thousands that some of these stars are getting you can hear about that in my exclusive interview with Hayden Parker by the way uh, we've put that at the end from the panto podcast apparently it's his most listened to podcast ever this year and we thank you very much for it it's still number one on his channel, and uh, I'm glad that you're interested in what I'm interested in. Say what you like about me, but at least I'm passionate. We're not including Newcastle Theatre Raw this year, mostly because Danny Adams is a spineless weasel who has his nose so far up Michael Harrison's bottom that he has to stick his head down the toilet and press the flush button 
to try and breathe. We should also give special nods to Corden Fairfield Halls, who have done the most original and beautiful set 2019-2020. This is the bar that Kudos need to aspire to. They say in crew it's rubbish because they have no uh, wings to put anything in. There's no room to put any props. There's no room to put any sets. Therefore, it just has to be rubbish. Well, how about designing a set that uses video like Croydon and having the whole show through video and projection. There's an idea. Spend some money instead of just doing nothing. This is how the industry will move forward. This is how Panto will keep to 2019, 2020 standards. And God bless Croydon for putting a ton of money into this. Right, let's quickly whiz through then some of the pantomimes I saw this year and tell you about the good, the bad, the ugly. And we'll tell you about the best pantomime 2019, 2020. And the worst, of course. Well, I suppose we should start at the very beginning. Best Light Show has to go to the Palladium. Ben has done an amazing job this year. There's no doubting, regardless of my feelings of the content, which is quite appalling. And not in the spirit of Panto, it looks beautiful. But the biggest surprise was Morgan Brind at Derby Arena. He's also got Loughborough, and this guy is a pro. He's an amazing dame too. But look at the scale of this show. I mean, it just looks so beautiful. This is a velodrome. There should be bikes racing around this thing, and he's built this beautiful theatre. It looks so polished and beautiful and the fly out at the end of Peter Pan is just stunning. Such inspiring talent and this is where the bar should be set for people like Kudos who are throwing out cheap shows at Glasgow SEC, Northampton, Darlington and certainly Crew. We'll get to that in a bit. It was lovely to go to Leicester de Montfort Hall. Again, a tricky space to put on a pantomime but they did a great job with Sam Bailey and Anthony Costa who raised the roof. Great to see huge talent doing the business. Matthew proposed to Natasha on stage and that went global. A wonderful moment for Panto in 2019. You can watch that interview at the end too. We went to Litchfield Garrick to see Paul Hendy's Cinderella. Again, the fly out of the horse and carriage at the end of Act 1 is just it's just so beautiful. Sam and George also did a really incredible job there at Litchfield. Sellout crowd, a beautiful little theatre and a stunning production that far exceeds expectation. Just looks lovely. Congratulations to him. This was the worst crew lyceum. I've never seen a worse set in my life. I don't know what they're doing here. But I mean, even you can see the costumes are second rate. These were village hall standard. Never seen a worse atrocity than this kudos pantomime. It's an insult to Cannon and Ball who were brilliant. Look at that there. I mean, what contempt to add a bit on the bottom without taping it and painting it. Never seen anything like it in my entire life. Unbelievable. We got a big problem with uh, Kudos in Bradford using these actors on their knees to do the dwarfs. It doesn't work for me. And we were thrilled to get the word out about Goldilocks. Milton Keynes Aladdin is sensational this year with Joe Pasquale knocking it out of the park as he always does. One of the highlights of the Panto season. Milton Keynes Theatre Aladdin until the 14th of January. And that, of course, stars Lee Mead too. This guy has such a tremendous voice. He's so talented and it's so lovely to see him and Joe working so well together in this big scale production directed by Johnny Bowles magnificently. Look at it. Looks beautiful, sounds beautiful and has such wonderful polish. This is what Panto should be. This is the bar Kudos should be setting around the country. Aladdin at Milton Keynes Theatre. Next come off the rank, we go to our best panto this year. Lyceum at Sheffield has Paul Hendy's Cinderella with musical direction by James Harrison live from the box. This is just sensational. Everything's right. An original script, a beautiful looking show, an incredible dame in Damien, a top cast, beautiful writing. It's just sensational. I loved everything about it. And this is our best pantomime 2019. If you get to see it, it's on at the Sheffield Lyceum. And again, the energy in the room from the second this went up was magnificent. Just had a great energy about it. Congratulations to Paul Hendy and uh, I'm hugely hugely impressed. Every little bit of detail, like putting the band in the boxes. This guy James Harrison who does the music is such a mega talent. He's writing for people across the country. Such energy, such spirit of pantomime and my god unbelievable talent. Hendy is one to watch. He deserves bigger theatres. He deserves to take some of these kudos ones where they're just packing it full of contempt taking the money and running because I'm telling you this guy is one to watch a showbiz pro of course he's been in the business for his entire life and of course his wife too with that legacy of pantomime 
makes it unsurprising that this is a killer cast with a fantastic set of costumes, beautiful set, and the best pantomime 2019-20 from Celebrity Radio. Congratulations to Paul and the team in Sheffield at the Lyceum. Fabulous. Talking of Cinderella's, we loved Cinderella at the Nottingham Theatre Royal, starring Les Dennis and Connor and Gareth Gates. This was a mixed bag, really. Some worked and some didn't within this panto, but the big standout star was the brilliant Richard Cadell and Sutty. My God, what a talent this guy is. Just lives the spirit of panto within his bones, and he's such an amazing turn. Richard Cadell, one of our favourite stars of the 2019-2020 season at the Nottingham Theatre Royal was Cinderella. It is amazing how these kudos pantos live up to and disappoint in equal measure. It's been more obvious to me this season than ever that some they just don't care about and others they do. When you see one of those special effects, Wolverhampton, for example, was incredible with Sue Pollard. They had the beautiful Twins FX effect. They had Sue just belting it out. The set looked beautiful, that old FFE set. They wouldn't let us film it there because of the kids. Uh, But uh, that's going in-house next year, so you can see the new pantomime by the Wolverhampton Grand. Kudos have lost Liverpool and Wolverhampton, so it's going to be an interesting year for them. I predict they're going to lose even more. And as I said, Sleeping Beauty by PHA, Paul Holman Associates. He had a tiny theatre, but my God, big in spirit. Some of the biggest laughs of the season. One of our best, Sleeping Beauty at the Carriage Works in Leeds, starring Moira Dubois, who we loved. Fantastic talent there at uh, Leeds perfect dame so there you go there's a few ideas of what we loved and didn't love this year in panto congratulations also to southampton i didn't get to see it but i hear it's absolutely magnificent with the grumble weeds and darren day south end was also a topper robin hood with ashley banjo and diversity one of the best of the season for sure Huge congratulations this season to James Schoen, who blew me away with his work at Liverpool Arena. He'll be back in 2020. And Paul Hendy, fantastic. Paul Holman with Diddy Khan up in Bridlington was a joy. And Morgan Brind, one of the best dames in the business and a fabulous scale show at Derby Arena. Also a lovely show at Loughborough 2 on a smaller scale, but the attention to detail really is incredible. Christian Cunningham, who played Jack, I've got a feeling is a star in the making. Keep your eye on him. These guys are pushing the bar, and I'm telling you, kudos have to be careful with contempt like I saw in Crew and the lacklustre shows in Glasgow, Northampton and Darlington. They've got to be very careful. Theatres are making wise choices and there's some very rich competition out there. I've never seen better panto in my life than I've seen this year. I've never seen more ambition and bigger budgets being put into wowing audiences. Congratulations to everyone who's got through another season if you're still in the mid-run. Keep going, only two shows a day until March. And thank you to everybody who showed us kindness and hospitality this year. If you'd like to work with us in 2020, 2021, we'd love to come and see your show. Film or your cast, film the walk down, plaster Google. We'll even do your review too. Let us know. Alex at alexbelfield.co.uk, A-L-E-X at A-L-E-X-B-E-L-F-I-E-L-D.co.uk. Book us in. We'll clear a day and come down and see and promote your panto and get you talked about on social media and top Google and YouTube too. You've been listening to another roundup of Panto by me, Alex Belfield, here at CelebrityRadio.biz. We just hit 60 million minutes viewed on YouTube. We're the number one reviewer of theatre in the UK and Las Vegas. As much as this pisses Michael Harrison off, what a classy turn him and Nick are. They love Panto and money. See you next year. Tra.